Age-related macular degeneration affects the dark area of the retina shown here, known as the macula. There are two types of AMD, dry and wet. There is also an advanced dry form called geographic atrophy. The dry is caused by the accumulation of debris called drusen, which first builds up in one eye. Usually both eyes can develop the disease. The dry form of age-related macular degeneration may turn into the more serious wet form, characterized by the creation of many new blood vessels and bleeding in the macula. The advanced wet and dry types of the disease lead to the gradual loss of one's central vision, while peripheral vision remains intact. If you had AMD and were looking at this image, this is what you might see, a blurred center with more sharpness on the sides. The young man running along the southeastern coast of Ireland is Dr. John Nolan, vision scientist and Fulbright scholar, who with his team at the Waterford Institute of Technology is researching a promising nutritional supplement to help prevent age-related macular degeneration. Dr. Nolan's team of researchers is measuring the yellow protective macular pigment that is located in the central retina. Their study suggests that a lack of this pigment makes the photoreceptors vulnerable to blue light emitted by the sun and other day-to-day -day light sources, including computer screens. Oxidation to the photoreceptors occurs, causing debris called drusen to build up behind the retina. Drusen is one of the mechanisms that cause disruption of the normal barrier between the blood vessels and the retina, which leads to AMD. About six years ago, things began to look distorted on TV for Nora, and it got progressively worse. My reading was all shot to pieces. It would be there for a little while, be gone, big holes in it. So I went to see um, the specialist. He told me what it was, AMD, and that I'd better start making arrangements about moving into the city as living where I did, I needed the car. This was a, a situation that would deteriorate and there was no way out of it. In North America, 20 million people suffer from age-related macular degeneration. And this number is set to double in the next 10 years. The reason this is going to double is simply because we are living longer. Nolan's macular pigment research group has studied a nutritional supplement composed of the carotenoids lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin, which has shown remarkable success in increasing the protective yellow macular pigment. Phase two clinical trials are currently underway. I did take it every single day. And about three, maybe six months later, it began to dawn on me that the wavy lines were gone. Reading was much easier. A lot of the problems were going away. And it's so much more improved that I'm happy. <laughs> Nora has now her independence back, is now back driving and is now back visiting her loved ones. And she feels that she's got a second chance and she so much appreciates her vision. And when you see people like Nora and what it means to them, and having this taken away from them and then restored, it's only then you can get a concept of the importance and the greatness that these nutritional supplements have been for, for Nora. I value my independence and um, I have it back now. Hopefully it'll last. Now we're going to measure your macular pigment. Okay. So what I want About 10 years know, ago, exactly. Harry Marsland received his diagnosis. He returns to the Institute for Periodic Checkups, utilizing special equipment designed by the Institute to measure the amount of the yellow protective pigment in his eyes. We can measure how an individual responds to these supplements at the retina very quickly. We can measure how their vision changes and improves because of taking these supplements. And we've also seen now that individuals at increased risk of progressing have halted the disease. I started taking the macular supplement in May 2007. At that time I was using this magnifying glass to read virtually anything. Three years ago this was the smallest size of letter I could read with or without spectacles. I then started taking a pigment based supplement and within nine to ten months my vision had improved. I can now use the computer without having to use large print on the screen. I can read my professional periodicals without any difficulty. 
I can walk through the fields and the countryside without having to use the paved paths. We've now got hope that the site can be restored and macular pigment supplementation is the root of that hope. Things have just turned around completely for me. The promise of nutritional supplements has been realized already to some degree and that's the ARES trial where they give vitamins and antioxidants to patients with AMD and show that they have prolongation of their vision. Regarding nutrition and eye disease, it's very well known and it's been shown that healthy habits, healthy foods, and supplements can delay the progression of macular degeneration. But not everyone will respond the same way, and so we need to be cautious about generalizing the, this association to everyone. We inherit our genome from our parents, one half from our mother and one half from our father. And sometimes something goes wrong. In fact, there are about three billion nucleotides in the human genome and just one small mistake is sufficient to cause a problem. And when that problem occurs, it can lead to inherited retinal degeneration. Because the source of inherited retinal degeneration is DNA. It makes sense to be able to deliver normal DNA to correct the defect. And hence, gene therapy is going to be a key player in trying to develop novel therapies for these inherited retinal degenerations. The complement system is made up of about 30 proteins programmed by genes that mobilize to fight disease in our bodies. The system maintains a tight balance between activation and inhibition. In an individual with AMD, there may be too much activation or not enough inhibition due to defective genes. This imbalance can cause MACs or holes to form in the macula, which can lead to AMD. This is what a representation of MACs looks like. MACs are prevented from forming on the surface of cells in normal individuals by a protective protein called CD59. This protein is under study in Kumar Singh's lab at Tufts University School of Medicine. In the gene therapy approach that we are taking in our laboratory, we plan to express the same protein but at higher levels on the cells that are normally getting damaged in AMD, and theoretically, we hope to be able to prevent the formation of these MACs on these cells. The most efficient way to get a gene into a cell is by using a virus as a vector or carrier. Unfortunately, using viruses is problematic because unwanted side effects can occur. Therefore, a safe way must be found to get the normal version of the gene into a cell. In our laboratory, we're developing a nanoparticle approach. Under the electron microscope, they're about the same size as a virus as well. They can, in fact, get into the cell and deliver their cargo, which is DNA, into the nucleus. And this is exactly what viruses do very efficiently. When we use gene therapy, we're in fact putting back in a normal version of the gene such that the protein that's produced from that is now normal and allows the cell to revert to a normal, healthy looking or healthy functioning cell. One of the beauties of gene therapy is that we can potentially inject just once directly into the eye and that may serve as a therapeutic for the lifetime of the patient, whether it be dry AMD or wet AMD. The promises of gene therapy at this point in time are tremendous. In principle, one can replace a bad gene with a good one. It's easier to replace a gene that's recessive, where you need two bad ones in order to produce the disease, and that's where we've had success. The challenge is for genes that are dominant. You need to get rid of the bad guys before the good guys can do their work. For me, science is all about solving problems. And I would love to be the one to be able to solve this problem and provide some sort of therapies to people who otherwise might potentially go blind. And I think I'll have fulfilled my role as a scientist if I can achieve that. This mountain biker, scientist Dr. Nathan Mata, is working with fenretinide, a drug first developed to fight cancer, but has now been shown to have promise in helping people with dry AMD. 
The visual cycle is a process occurring in the back of the eye where dietary vitamin A is converted into a light-sensing chemical compound which feeds the photoreceptors. In a normal visual cycle, vitamin A is used and recycled, and there is no problem. In people with dry AMD, the toxic debris generated by vitamin A accumulates in the back of the eye and causes AMD. For people with dry AMD, the idea is to find a way to reduce or slow down the amount of vitamin A introduced into the visual cycle, and thus eliminate or reduce the amount of debris that accumulates in the back of the eye. Fenretinide is a small molecule compound that reduces the accumulation of toxic material in the back of the eye. It was originally developed as an anti-cancer drug, but failed because of lack of efficacy. Because of the extensive safety record established for fenretinide during the cancer trials, we were able to skip phase one testing and proceed directly into phase two, thereby saving at least three to five years of development time. They tried this drug on patients with geographic atrophy and noted that in some of them, the rate at which the lesion in the retina progressed was slowed down. And indeed, the testimony from some of the patients who benefited from the action of that drug is quite dramatic and convincing. After being told that there was no cure, that my vision would continue to deteriorate, I found that it didn't have to be that way. Mrs. Tendler was one of the patients who received a high dose of fenretinide. You can see that over the course of the 18-month study, the area of atrophy or damaged cells in the back of the eye remained stable, but one year after stopping the medication, you can see in the dark areas a dramatic growth in damaged tissue. One of the more remarkable observations we made during the course of this study was that fenretinide actually reduced the incidence of conversion from dry to wet AMD by 50%. This is an astounding result for an orally available medication like fenretinide. I would go back in that program in a minute if I possibly could get that same medication again. The hypothesis of this clinical study was that by reducing the amount of vitamin A getting into the cells of the back of the eye, we may be able to slow down the process of macular degeneration. I'm very happy to say that this study demonstrated that indeed this may be possible with fenretinide, and we look forward very excitedly to future clinical studies. Treatment with vitamin A antagonists like um, fenretinide would be a treatment, not a cure. With continued positive data coming from our phase two trial, we expect to start phase three studies within the year, complete those within two to three years, and hopefully be on the market by 2015. Dr. Maseo Takahashi of the Riken Center for Developmental Biology in Kobe, Japan, has found a way to create human photoreceptor cells and retinal pigment epithelial cells, or RPE, from human embryonic stem cells. We can successfully transplant retinal pigment epithelial cells and photoreceptor cells into mice, and then several years into human. Photoreceptors, or rods and cones, enable us to see in day or night. Retinal pigment epithelial cells nourish the photoreceptors. Without healthy retinal epithelial cells, photoreceptor cells are damaged or die. Takahashi's lab is working on a way to purify photoreceptor cells created from embryonic stem cells because some of these cells can cause tumors. Healthy RPE cells are necessary to maintain the photoreceptors, and these cells must also be purified. A way already exists to purify RPE cells. Once the photoreceptor cells has been lost, only the cell transplantation will cure. But before the photoreceptor cells are damaged, we can rescue the photoreceptor cells by transplanting the new healthy retinal pigment epithelial cells. Takahashi and Sasai Laboratories found a high efficiency method to increase the number of RPE and photoreceptor cells in volume from embryonic stem cells, so there will be enough cells to transplant. Transplantation will involve millions of cells for humans. However, one of the drawbacks to transplantation of cells made from embryonic stem cells is that human recipients will have to be on immunosuppressive drugs because these cells come from another person. 
In a dramatic development, research is underway to use induced pluripotent stem cells for AMD because these cells would be made from the same person, eliminating the need for immunosuppressive drugs as well as any religious objections. Takahashi believes that the transplantation of induced pluripotent RPE stem cells clinical trials will begin within three years. For the photoreceptor cells, it will take much longer time, hopefully within 10 years. Regenerative medicine is not a dream. At the beginning, the effect of the regenerative medicine for you know, diseases will have small effect, and then gradually the treatment will be improved, and it will be one of the main treatment in the retinal disease, I'm sure. Converting the stem cells into the cells that we want them to be is, first of all, a great challenge, and we really haven't solved that yet. Secondly, the cells have to integrate into the system. In principle, it can be a cure. In practice, I think that's a ways off. If we are using the patient's own cells to make new RPE cells, those cells will also have uh, the genetic defect that, uh, uh, that was causing the disease in the first place. And so we haven't really solved the problem, we've just delayed it. Kathy Blake is one of 32 people participating in a study at the Doheny Eye Institute at the University of Southern California to validate a device that will provide artificial sight to legally blind people. The vision that I have now is really nothing. I don't really see any shapes or movement or shadows. I really cannot see anything. Kathy received an artificial retina First, electrodes are surgically implanted on the surface of the macular region of the retina. A tiny camera mounted on eyeglasses sends the light signals to a mini computer worn on the person's belt. From there, the signal is passed to the electrodes in the eye. The controlled electrical signal excites the remaining retinal neurons, which send impulses via the optic nerve to the brain, where it is processed into a visual image. For the artificial retina to work, there has to be some remaining cells in the retina. Uh, the photoreceptor, the rods and cones can all be damaged, but some of the remaining retina has to be intact. Not all of it, uh, but some needs to be there for the device to electrically stimulate and send the, send the signals via the optic nerve to the brain. In order to read print on a newspaper, you have to have a certain amount of resolution in order to achieve that. And the technique at this point of retinal chips has not achieved that level. The solution is more electrodes, more contacts, more stimulation sites. At this point, we uh, have the 60 electrode device. Our plans and on the drawing board, we have a thousand plus pixel or electrode device, which should theoretically restore face recognition to the patient, and also very good reading ability. As technology advances, further miniaturization of electrodes will become possible, not only allowing for more electrodes to be implanted, but also making surgery quicker and simpler. After the surgery, I was really surprised that I really can't feel any um, hardware in my eye at all. There's a lot of hardware in there, and. Uh, I can't feel anything, it's very comfortable. The 60 electrode device that is currently being tested in the uh, clinical trial, right, we think that start, within right. one to two years this is going number. to be marketed in Europe and soon thereafter in the United States. Okay. This is the pixelated image that Kathy sees as she scans the screen by moving her head with the camera mounted on her glasses. Work is currently under development to implant a camera in the eye the advantage being that it would move with the eye, which is much easier and more natural. You are about to see something remarkable. Our camera caught Kathy seeing numbers for the first time since she became blind over 30 years ago. Number five. That's correct. Great job. The artificial retina is a multidisciplinary 
long-term, high-risk type of project, but it also has a high payoff. By that I mean a payoff to help so many people worldwide who, for whom there is no foreseeable cure. The promise of artificial sight is only limited by the technical expertise of engineers who can introduce as many electrodes as possible. In the end, it'll probably be a combination of various approaches to treat macular degeneration, including some of the ones you've seen in this video, that will provide the best hope for treating this disease.